Hey everybody, what's up? We're about to have a live recording with Michelle, who's a fitness coach. She's just getting hooked up and we'll be able to talk all about health and finances and how it all works together. Thanks for being here. All right, I can, can you hear me now? Hmm. We are having some tech stuff today. I'm unmuted in Zoom and I'm unmuted here. Me. All right, good. We're good. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna hit um, record to the cloud. I think I'm hearing you on the computer though. Okay, I'll mute myself here. Does that work? If I, I can't hear you here now. What about now? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. But I can't hear you. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we did it, we did it. And it's working on Zoom too, I assume. I hope that it's recording on Zoom as well. Let's check. Can you talk one more time? Yes. I'll turn it up. Yes. Hello, testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. No, now it's just on the phone. <laughs> you know what? We can just record on IG and steal the audio from that. We want to just try that because we keep having issues. Thanks for letting us know, Yazzie. Sorry we're having tech issues. Okay, so should I close out Zoom? I think so. I think let's do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Apologies. All right. The, the tech issues, y'all. Okay. We're here. We made it. Thank you for everybody's patience um, with the tech issues today. It was worth it because we have Michelle with us, who's a fitness coach, and she's going to be talking to us about finances and fitness and her own business journey. So thank you so much for being here, Michelle. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to folks? Yeah, I'm an online fitness coach. I currently live in Madison, Wisconsin. I came here last year before this. I was living in South Korea as an ESL teacher, and that was what I did for most of my career. And uh, I started my business about two years ago, two and a half going on. And wow. yeah, I love what I do. Well, that's amazing. Congrats on making it to two and a half years. In your business. Thank you. Thank you. It does feel like a feat sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, and so you, you mentioned um, living abroad, and I know that um, your family has some, some immigrant backgrounds. So Did you want to touch a little bit about your connection to immigration? Yes. Um, I am half Korean. My dad is from New Jersey, and he met my mother while he was a soldier in Korea and they got married so my mom my mother who's from south korea she uh, immigrated to the states right she was they were like 20 years old really young it was her first time away from her family when she left she barely spoke any english and she said goodbye to her family thinking she would never see them again that was you know before the internet before she didn't really know it was you know what the world was like outside of her her own little um t town she was from the country so i admire my mom so much for what she went through and how resilient and strong she was That's, in that time of her life ah it's incredibly brave i i don't know how people do it and it's just an example why like immigrants are often the most courageous people yeah yeah so i grew up multicultural uh kind of i mean i feel like i'm an american but never fully feeling like i fit in in one place i always feel a little bit different wherever i am in the world um par partially because people kind of misunderstand as well where where you might be from or what your background is which is understandable but um yeah definitely multicultural 
And I know you were um, mentioning before about like that definition of expat versus immigrant. Do you want to share some thoughts on that? Because I've definitely had the same thoughts having lived abroad. Yes. Yeah. Where did you live abroad before, by the way? I, so I lived in Egypt um, and Ecuador. Wow. Okay, cool. So you've probably seen some of the things that I've seen as well. I, I, it's, I think I always, this comes from a place of always feeling a little bit protective of my mom because we lived in the South when I was younger. And I remember going to some churches, my, my parents were missionaries. I remember going to some churches and people giving her weird looks or like speaking loud to her or slowly to her, like she was dumb. And I would always think like, she's speaking in her second language. Like you're speaking in your first language. So I think I always felt that kind of defensiveness for people who are speaking in their second language, being an ESL teacher as well. So I think when when Americans, especially white Americans, go to another country, they, they tend to call themselves expats, and it's like a term of privilege. Yeah. And um, then when people who are not white or people who are not from America come to America or a white, you know, centric place, they're called immigrants. <laughs> and they're looked down upon, even if they're highly qualified, um, there's, they have to learn to speak another language. Most times expats don't even learn the language of the country that they're in because English is so predominant. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of privilege there. There's a lot of unfairness and justice that I've seen in different countries. It never made sense to me. Like, why are people telling me I'm an expat? <laughs> why a different term would be used in the U.S.? And it just, like, is such a, it underscores all of the layers of, racism, right, and fear of foreigners, um, xenophobia, that is such a part of the labels we use and how we look at immigration. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, yeah so um, shifting a little bit to kind of your experience, um, going from a teacher to mm -hmm. starting becoming a fitness coach and, and starting an online business, how did that all happen? Yeah, so... Um, Fitness, I guess, nutrition, exercise has always been a personal passion of mine. I share my story on my IG. I'm, I'm currently sharing one. I, 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 had an eat, I dealt with an eating disorder when I was younger. So it was kind of always a private, um, a private thing that, like, I, I went through a lot with my body and with my health and overcame a lot and uh, found that, hey, like, this used to take over my life in a really unhealthy way, and now I find that it helps me be, be healthier and so that was like my personal journey. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I was teaching and I like teach. I like teaching. I like little kids and I like students and seeing seeing my students grow. But I knew it wasn't something that I really wanted to do forever. So the fitness thing was kind of always in the back of my head. But I was so scared. It felt so scary. I, there were times where I was like, I'm going to study. I'm going to get my certification. I'm going to do something. I'm going to go out there. And I just would, I would just like, like my, my heart would stop. And I would like hold my breath. And I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> and then uh, finally, it, it came about, I knew we were moving to America. And I was like, I need to figure something out. If I'm not going to be teaching ESL in America, and I don't want to be doing this, what am I going to do? So it kind of propelled me and pushed me to um, take steps for, towards that. And then the pandemic happened, I was planning to do it on, on um, in person. And I had my certifications, I was practicing. But then the pandemic happened, and my job fell through the job, the teaching job that I had lined up fell through because of COVID in Korea. So I was like, okay, it's, it's all or nothing. So I just dove in completely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, so much to point out here. Like, I love that you created a business based on something you used to struggle with that now you can help people with. Those are always the best businesses. Yeah. Props to you for having the courage to not only face it yourself, but turn it toward helping others. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm so I'm so grateful you shared that. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Good lesson, I think, for our students and community members who are like thinking about starting businesses with stuff they have struggled with. And you're such an example of, of how you can help other people. We, we relate to that a lot because finances was something we struggled with a lot. Mm -hmm. Created to the US. Um, and then the pandemic. Wow, it, it made a huge challenge that you turned into an opportunity um yeah do you have any like kind of words for people who have had are going through experiences like that where they lose a job or something falls through maybe it's for a reason 
Oh, yes. I love that. So uh, just a little bit more detail about that time. So I had my job lined up. It would fell through. The guy was like, I'm sorry, we don't know. And then eventually got pushed back and pushed back until it disappeared. So I was like, I need to figure something out. Um, especially because I knew I was going to be supporting my now ex-partner through law school, which is a big thing plus a big move. So I knew I had to be like stable financially. Yeah. Um, and then the pandemic happened and I... I didn't know exactly what I was doing, but I researched how, how do you do online training? <laughs> I just literally Googled it, <laughs> did the lots of searching, found a program. I invested, you know, coaching programs. But if you're not in the coaching world, it's like, you don't understand like, what, why would you charge this much? Oh, it's this much money for, you know, a coaching program. I was new to, I was on a teacher's salary. So very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I used my savings and I invested into this, this program and it was more than I'd ever spent on something like, like this. And I multiplied it by 10 in my first year because I knew it had to work. I went all in. I, there's, there was no other option for me at that point. I, and I loved it. I was enjoying each step of the way. It was exciting. It was fun. But I think there's some level of like, especially there's, you have to have caution and be wise and smart. But I think there's some level of, I have to bet on myself. I have to invest in myself. And I think a lot of the times we, when it comes to money, we, um, we say, yes, I need to do this. Yes, I need to do this. But when it comes to the money part, it's like, Ugh! we kind of clench our wallets or like get really tight. And that's not where the energy flows. That's not how you make things happen. Yeah. So I learned that lesson personally. <laughs> I remember when I had to learn that lesson, um, the first coach I ever worked with, I delayed it for a year and I recommended her to everyone I knew. <laughs> I thought she was amazing and I wanted to be like her. <laughs> and then I finally worked with her and like, that's how we started Immigrant Finance, you know, and like, could have helped a lot more people a year early if I had just, but you have to, you, it's a new way of thinking when you're not used to investing in yourself, yeah. right? But it's just a way to like collapse time. like all that, you know, the knowledge she spent 10 years learning, she was able to teach me in like six weeks or whatever it was, you know? Exactly. It's so worth it. And it's not, I don't think it's just what you're learning. I think people are like, who's the perfect coach? Who's the perfect program? What's going to be the perfect solution? And I don't think it's just that. I think it's also the, 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 I guess the energy or the, the flow of like, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm betting on myself. I'm going all in for myself. Like that decision I think could be almost as valuable as the coaching you're getting. Absolutely. Cause you're betting on yourself. Right. And yeah. like you, you had to go all in, you didn't have another choice. So question for you, like how does this apply to the health space? Like the, what that, do you mean by that? like investing in yourself, like whether it's investing in a gym membership or like, you know, healthy food or getting support from someone like you yeah. Yeah. It's, I see this all the time, uh, with, with people that I talk with, there's this, um, I think there's, there's an idea, maybe it's because it's, there's a lot of free stuff, which is great. And there's a lot of, you know, affordable things, which is great. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's good. But I think, I think people are afraid to invest in themselves, like something like their health, because it feels so superfluous it feels so extravagant it feels like not necessary when in actuality it's like the most important thing that you can invest in because <laughs> if you don't have your health what do you have but mm -hmm. i think people are and we're we, and we don't do it consciously all the time like we'll spend you know fifty hundred dollars on a meal out but then when it comes to spending that same amount on something that could help our health like even monthly or weekly it's like Oh no, I, I don't have money for that. I don't have, you know, it's, it's not, it, it comes down to priorities. And I think right. that when you have skin in the game, when you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak, you're going to be a little more committed and you're going to get more out of it. Totally. I mean, just a small example I can think of, um, you know, I love workout classes cause it makes me do it, you know, and I'm on my own. <laughs> I don't do yeah. it during the pandemic, I wasn't comfortable for a period. So I, you know, invested in, um, it was like the Peloton workout videos, you know, and something mm -hmm. 12 or $14 a month or something. And I had some resistance. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna actually use this, if I wanna commit to 
paying that every month, even though it was such a small amount relatively compared to other expenses we have. But by doing it, I use the videos like I would work, I would lift weights, you know, at least a couple times a week because I was like, I'm paying for it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And like that, I know there's a lot more you can do, but I wanted to give that example for people of like how it, it kind of gives you that accountability sometimes. Yes, definitely. And for some people, that's enough. Like maybe for you, that's enough. And some people, it's not enough when and that which in which case coaching might be a better option or having more one on one support. Yeah. And what does that look like fitness coaching? Yeah, so my program is all online. I have uh, an app and a membership site where I can deliver uh, workouts for my clients. And it's workouts and nutrition, I, I think are kind of just the basics for what I give my clients. Those are like, no brainers, of course, I'm going to give you good workouts, I'm going to give you good nutrition guidance. But beyond that, I because when people say, what do you struggle with? They say, I struggle with my eating, I struggle with exercise. But why do you struggle with those things? A lot of it has to do with our mindset. A lot of it has to do with our lifestyle, stress, sleep, lifestyle factors, family. So I think it's really important in fitness, within my scope of practice, of course, to be able to support people in a holistic way where it's not just, okay, here's your workouts, here's what to eat, goodbye. It, it's more like, okay, what's going on in your life that's, that you're struggling showing up with the workouts? Like, what do, you, what do we need to shift in your mindset so that this becomes easier? And I like to give that support to my clients as well. I really love that. And it's, it's there's so much overlap with um, financial planning and, and all that because it's it's the same thing. It's like, it's easy to just ignore it or avoid it when you've got stuff going on. And there's so much mindset work to do to like, let yourself make it a priority and like make that decision, right? Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if it's because we tend to have a lot of shame around money and our bodies. Yep, yep. Right? So we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to deal with it. It can be difficult. Yeah, yeah. And we were starting to talk before recording about like, crash dieting and like the overlaps with some approaches to budgeting uh, i know I, I talked about that when we were in a workshop together um you know with budgeting it's like a lot of approaches are very punishment focused mm -hmm. so don't spend you know one dollar extra on anything unless you absolutely need it and if you do like you should have all this guilt and shame <laughs> never worked for me when i was learning to budget um and I think it's really similar to crash dieting where like, you know, maybe for a week or something, you might lose a few pounds or, you know, you might reduce some of your spending. But then like when that ends, you, you're just desperate and you want to go eat a lot of things and sweet, go spend a lot of money. Exactly. And I particularly like to work with um, women who struggle with the yo-yo dieting or or the emotional eating with that up and down. I myself in my past have struggled with extremes. So yeah. I've learned, I've had to learn to find that balance. And that's what I like to give to my clients as well. But it's a perfect parallel. It's like that deprivation, indulged, deprivation, indulged, and it's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to this topic with your health and fitness, um, what do you find are like some of the common themes of mindset wise that are contributing to that behavior? Yeah, I would say number one, perfectionism. Well, perfectionism. Yeah. Uh, the clients that I work with, but one of the first things we go over is something is better than nothing. Something yeah. is better than nothing. A little bit goes, like, we think like, oh, but I have to be good and I have to do it just right. I have to work out for an hour a day and I have to eat right and no sugar, no, um, no carbs, all that. <laughs> but mm -hmm. like you said, it doesn't last and, and you're preparing yourself for failure. So finding a way where you can be kinder to yourself. Oh, I kinder. Kind, so much, like, we, I, that's what I, I think that's some, one thing that my clients walk away with um, the most is I'm learning to be kinder to myself. So we're so hard on ourselves, especially when it comes to like how we should look or what we should eat or how we should move. Not to say that those things aren't, aren't important. It's important to take care of ourselves. But when it's coming from a place of, like you said, punishment or severity or strictness, mm. it's, it's just it's not really healthy. It's not inherently healthy, you know, mentally or emotionally. Yeah, absolutely. Um Wow, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I can imagine like a lot of overlap with finances where that come the way I've seen that come up with um, our students. And I tend to think of it more as like scarcity thoughts, which, you know, good. 
we have them as humans, like they're not going away. It's impossible to get rid of, but you can do a lot of work to shift your mindset. We are not making decisions from that place and like working on your beliefs of what's possible. Um, and it's a similar thing of like getting away from like the deprivation and being so hard on yourself and like allowing yourself to feel more abundant and supported and like, you know, trusting yourself, those kinds of themes. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's everything I do is based on two beliefs. We're worthy just as we are and we're powerful right now to make the decisions that we want. And when you can come from fitness, I mean, it's, it's, it's very idealistic in some ways, like it takes practice to get to that point. Um, but if you can come from a place of worthiness, I'm already worthy. So I'm going to take care of my body rather mm -hmm. than, I'm not good enough, so I need to beat myself up or so that I can look a certain way or, you know, reach and a certain goal. That's really cool. I'm really grateful you're sharing this with our listeners because I think a lot of people could benefit from applying that mindset with their finances too. Like I'm yeah. worthy of investing in my future, right? Like I'm worthy of like, you know, taking action for this big financial goal I have instead of like, you know, assuming it's impossible or not available for me. So that's yeah. Really yeah, and I will tell you personally, like, honestly, I still work on that with my money mindset. Like, do I deserve this? Do I deserve to have money? Like, feeling worthy of having abundance is, is kind of, it's a practice. It really is. And we've been so trained when it comes to our health and our bodies and our money to, like, not believe that right and like prepare for the worst assume the worst right be so hard on ourselves it's really sad like the how the culture has contributed i guess it's just making me think off the top of my head like compared to other cultures we've seen do you see that similar thing or is it like uh, more of an american thing that we we're so hard on ourselves with our bodies with physical aspects of our bodies um, I came from living in Korea. So I lived in Korea maybe about half my life, a little bit less than half of my life on and off. Um, in Korea, the culture is uh, really shame-based. And most people, it's a, you know, it's monocultural for the most part. So most people look similar in some ways, like, you know, similar genetic features. And I would say it's even worse, maybe even worse in Korea with in terms of like body image and having to look a certain way. But yeah, coming back to America, there are, and, and then having traveled to, you know, a few couple dozen countries in my life and lived in different places, there are, yeah, you, America is unique in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> in regards to fitness and health. And yeah. I feel like there's a there's so much of an emphasis on it um, that people are kind of sick of it. Where it's it's not an emphasis as in let's take action and let's you know take care of ourselves. It's like oh I have to do this and everyone knows they should do this, but there's more of that like looming pressure rather than inspired action. I guess. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's if that makes sense. sense. <laughs> does make sense. Yeah. Um, how would you, or what advice would you give to folks in the immigrant community in the U.S. specifically when it comes to anything related to health, fitness, and finances in business, since you're a business owner? Okay. The, yes. the floor is yours. Yeah, okay. Oh, um, to your community and to the people who are listening, like, I'm so happy to be able to be here because I, I so admire people who come from another country uh, to move, who probably have to learn another language, who have to adjust to a completely new culture. It's one of the scariest. It's like like putting a fish in the desert or like it's just like you you have to. It's so stressful. You have to learn and relearn so many things, usually at once. So I think that's so brave. Um, and I will say that America is is really, really racist and very classist coming from living abroad and coming here. It, it, I cried when I first came here. I was like, this is really bad. It's really obvious and it's really sad. Um, so even I would I will say that even though there are those privileges and there's like a like a power differentials, I think that we always, no matter what, we always have control over our attitude and our actions, no matter what situation we're in. And I would say that in terms of like finances, fitness, and business, 
I would say the, the three important things are um, education, support, and consistency. Mm. Those three things are the most important. And um, yeah, you have to know what you're doing because there's a lot of information out there. It could be so confusing. And I think yep. support is so important, especially from someone who knows what they're talking about, who's probably been where you've been. And then you just have to keep, keep at it, keep doing it every single day. Not in the, like it, it's not always fun, but you just got to keep doing it. And that's where the results come. Oh, that was so good. So concise. Those three things. It was education, support, consistency. Yeah. Wow. I don't think I could have said it better. And I haven't heard it that way, but it's so true. With I think it applies to every area, finances, health, and, and business. It makes sense because, like, anytime you're growing, you know, it's, it's into the unknown. You mm -hmm. don't know what you're doing. It's uncomfortable. It's scary right and we're not meant to do things alone as humans like we're you know social creatures we learn we learn in groups um and from others and from mentors and support so i love that focus on like the education and the support right you don't want to have just education and then it's like how do i apply this to me in my situation <laughs> and then the consistency right if you don't Oh my gosh, you blew my mind. Like if you don't have the consist consistency of applying it and the, d the, com the committing to that to yourself, like it doesn't really matter what you learned or what support you got. Right. And that's the part where you take the personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And get that support, continued support even. Yeah. yeah. Keep applying it. Mm -hmm. that be helpful for people. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That's great to hear. Um, this is so, so interesting. And you've shared a lot of valuable advice. What would you say is the number one lesson you wish you learned about finances or starting a business um, in the beginning of your journey? Mm -hmm. I would say they kind of coincided because when you're getting a salary or you're just going to work at a job, it's like, oh, this is what's coming in. I wasn't forced to have to learn more things about you know money and investing and I, it opened up a whole new world when i started my business about learning about finance i've read i've read and listened to so many books about finance just because i find it so fascinating um but i would say that it's a marathon not a sprint mm. and um to make sure that you are the turtle not the rabbit <laughs> and yes. to enjoy it along the way uh, enjoy it along the way um, there's going to be, you know, there's always highs and lows, but if you, and I think underneath, you know, those three things that I mentioned, education, support, and consistency, and like staying the course, there has to be a really strong purpose or desire for what you're doing. And I think that's different for everyone and really personal. Like I know my purpose for my business and wanting to help people. And that's what drives me. If I didn't have that, I would have quit a while, like a long time ago when it got hard. But if you have that desire, whether it's your family you want to support or a lifestyle you want to live or, you know, money you want to make, whatever that is for you, keeping that, you know, in front of your mind all the time. That's really valuable advice. I agree so much um, because it's hard work and there's up, there's ups and downs you mentioned. And like, if you don't have that, that big why it's hard and it's easy to give up. And um, that's why most people, you know, who start businesses, I think there's a statistic that like the majority of businesses fail in the first year or something I've like that. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the more, yeah, and then beyond five years, you're you're a diamond. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. And so, like, getting that clarity on why you're doing it is so foundational and important. I'm really glad you mentioned that. Um, and that is definitely something we can help with anybody listening. If you're not really, if you want to start a business but you're not really sure what, that's like probably my favorite thing to do is help people <laughs> brainstorm because it's. Often the answer is in your life experiences, just like, you know, the example you're providing, Michelle, with your business, of like, there was this thing you really struggled with. And now you have found a way to help other people struggling with it. And that's giving you a mission. And also you're giving value and money follows that, right? Um, so amazing, amazing example. Um, is there anything else we missed that you want to mention before we get to how people can follow you and learn about your work? Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to you, Adina. Uh, I know I remember when you came to, to give the talk at uh, in Madison, like a month ago or so. And I could see how 
passionate you were about what you do and just even following you online i can see that this is not just like oh i have to do this it's like really coming from a place of wanting to serve and i think that's so beautiful and i can't imagine how difficult it must be to you know do your work and do this and be a mom and you know be a wife and do all that you do so i just want to give a shout out to you for the value that you're bringing to your people and mad respect <laughs> so thank you Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. But thank you. I feel the same way about the work you're doing and all the people you're helping. So really great to to meet you. I'm glad we got to meet in Madison. That was such an awesome opportunity. Um, and I look forward to following your work and so uh, how other people can learn about you. Where would, Where's the best place to, to check out your stuff and stay in touch? So if you want like a simple... Um answer mlrosco.com is my website m l r o s k o or you could just follow me at michelle lynn rosco uh, on instagram Wonderful. michelle Ro the search michelle rosco yeah great and we'll we'll obviously link all that below um thank you so much for sharing this and it was really great to get to know you better and talk yeah thank you adina thank you so much bye talk to you later <laughs> bye